Scott Moonville. I lost a woman who raised me, my grandmother to diabetes and heart disease in 2004. At the time, I had a lot of questions about the medications that she was taking and why they put on a diet of steamed vegetables, baked fish, baked chicken, and lightly seasoned food. You know, the standard elderly diet, right? So why not start there? Like, why start after the damage has been done? I wanted my grandmother to live longer. I wanted her to see the man that I was to become. Because I wasn't the best kid growing up. Yeah. So that stayed with me. Losing her, and I questioned how she went out, will this happen to me when I get older? So fast forward. So I'm socially conscious, check. Politically conscious, check. And I have a good grasp of our history as an African American. We know about slavery, Black Wall Street, Jim Crow, the red lining, Tuskegee experiments, mass incarceration, and the ongoing revelations of atrocities that happened to us as African Americans, right? But one thing escaped me, one thing that I didn't think was an issue or was aware of, and it was my health. It was what I put into my body that I didn't take into account. At first, I didn't know what I was doing. I just remember going down a rabbit hole of information on the internet and finding out that the FDA allows 29% of fecal matter in ground turkey. <clears throat> then I found out it was genetically modified foods. I didn't know what to eat. I was just drinking water, taking herbs like Dr. Saber say, and passing out at work. So I found a vegan festival, and I went to it, and I discovered a documentary called Forks Over Knives. From there, I learned that there was doctors out there that was advocating for a whole food, plant-based diet. So let's take Dr. Colin T. Campbell, who wrote the book, The China Study, the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted. That's not my words, that's on the book. <laughs> but he was able to prove that if you eat a diet that's rich in meat and dairy, it can cause uh, heart disease, cancers, and strokes, right? But you can reverse those things by adopting a whole food, plant-based diet. All right, so that makes sense. So why are we not doing it? Why are doctors not using this to help us, to treat us? Are they being taught this in medical school? I asked the doctor, and he said, we only get one semester of nutrition, that's it. <clears throat> thought about my grandmother. Could have had a better quality of life if I knew that. She could have lived longer. She did not have to die from heart disease and diabetes. But she did. And we do. We are all affected disproportionately when it comes to heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. And when you hear disproportionately, when it comes to being an African American, there, it means that there's some type of systemic racism at play. And I'm like, what the, what the food too? <laughs> so I went back down the rabbit hole, with the, armed with the information of a whole food plant-based diet, and I looked up the dietary guidelines. And then we evolve over time. And that answer is, Do you know that over 65% of the global population are lactose intolerant? And we as African Americans are over 75% lactose intolerant. Yet, it is recommended that we consume three to five servings of dairy a day. The Committee of U.S. Dietary Guidelines consists of a number of white males and females, and more than half of those members of that expert panel that developed the new guidelines for the 2020-2025 have conflicts of interest due to the ties in the food industry. 
There is no adequate representation of the makeup of this country that's on that panel. Our lack of digestive lactose and how that affects our health is of no concern to them. It's everywhere. At school, kids get milk. The WIC voucher, you get milk. I remember being young, growing up, getting in line for the big block of government cheese. We incorporate dairy into our lives. We have been indoctrinated with it, that we need it so much so that we say these words, <laughs> we all have to die from something instead of giving it up. <laughs> but do we? Food deserts are another thing that we are affected disproportionately by being African American. <laughs> there are buku grocery stores in this country that offers fresh fruits and vegetables, yet they avoid our neighborhoods because there are no incentives for the big chains companies because the government focuses on the areas with the highest potential growth and not the ones with the highest needs. You'll see dollar stores, don't get me wrong, you will see corner stores pop up, but they don't offer the fresh foods and vegetables that we need. So what do we do? How do we save our parents, our grandparents, ourselves? How do we combat this system that disproportionately affects us? For one, we need to take our health seriously. We need to re-educate ourselves on what is best for us as a people. There are plenty of African-American doctors and health practitioners like Dr. Milton Mills, like Dr. Sabi, like Dr. Lala Africa, like Dr. Jewel Pukram, and Queen Afua, to name a few. Second thing, we need to get back to growing our own foods. You can partner with your local faith-based community and places of worship have land that is not being utilized to its full potential. And there are empty lots that can be converted to growing lots. There are organizations like Grow Baton Rouge that are out here that are doing that type of work. There are Facebook groups like Black Owned Farms that are filled with new black farmers that are excited about growing their own foods and helping themselves and the community. The third thing you need to do is explore plant-based options. There are restaurants that are popping up serving vegan dishes and others that are adding them slowly to their menu. There are alternatives to almost everything that you eat, from chicken to cornbread. Take that cow's milk out of your refrigerator and replace it with oat milk, coconut milk, or almond milk. Remove that dairy cheese and replace it with a plant-based cheese. Oyster mushrooms can taste just like chicken or fish. It depends how you batter them, right? You can still have red beans, just take the meat out. There are tons of videos showing you how to convert your favorite meals to a plant-based meal. My people, it's time that we take things into our own hands. Let us not have food take us out. Let's continue to enjoy our parents and grandparents. I didn't get to say goodbye to my grandmother. One day I was in a store, I was working, and a pastor that I, the church that our grandmother grew us up in, <clears throat> we had a good conversation. And when he was walking off, he said, you grew up to be a fine young man and I know your grandmother will be proud. Thank you. <laughs>